Alright, Isaiah chapter 11. I need to pick it up. Sort of raise up my voice. Go into preaching mode. <laughs> The air conditioner fixed before the meeting. <laughs> this power outage just don't be uh may affect that just a little bit. Yeah, might. All right, Isaiah chapter eleven. Isaiah chapter eleven. I'm trying to situate this right. Um, we 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 stop right there. It's only 16 verses, but I stopped there at verse 11, and I had a couple questions and comments at the end of the end of the lesson there, and and one of them was in verse six, uh, the righteous shall be of the girdle of his loins. In chapter chapter 11 is about the millennium, the Lord Jesus Christ. He um, sets up his kingdom and he rules, and uh, it's going to be the Lord reigning in righteousness and the curse is going to be lifted. So verse 6 Righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the young lion. The fatling together and little child shall lead them. So you get a, a little child, five, six years old leading the leopard by the leash. And maybe he's talking to him. I don't know. But it would be, that that's going to be pretty cool <laughs> to be able to do that. The cow and the bear shall feed their young ones and shall lie down. And, and what it's saying is the curse of sin is lifted there. The lion's going to eat like an ox, eat straw. And somebody said, well that means, does that mean we're going to not eat meat? Well, it might. <laughs> If it does, so be it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sister Karen says, you'll be a, I'm a meat eater. I like to eat hey, meat. Man, I eat pork, beef, whatever. <laughs> deer, I'm marinating some deer right now in the refrigerator for jerky or something. You know why I'm doing that? So I can get rid of all the deer meat so I can kill another one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I'm a meat eater. I, I like um, the pita organate. People eating tasty Animals. <laughs> it's PETA. <laughs> uh, I, I feel sorry for them animals. We ought to take them in the house and warm them up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a meat eater. But uh, you know what? If the Lord does that, He's going to change. Our body's going to be changed anyway. We'll be changed in a moment, twinkling an eye, and it won't matter one way or the other. But, but I. I Right now, I'm enjoying eating the meat. Mm -hmm. Eating the meat. So that, that question there, we took care of that one. But um, um, yeah, in Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 10, Peter says um, that's where the Lord calls to the Gentile nations right there. In Acts chapter 10, the sheet comes down with all the unclean meat on it. And uh, the Lord says to Peter, he says, you need to get up and witness to them. He says, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter says, not so, Lord. Nothing. <laughs> he says, well, amen. Rise, Peter, kill and eat. I live by that verse. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that question there. And then the other one we'll get right into here. Um, just start right there again. Um, verse... Eight, and the sucking child shall play on the hole of the ass, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. And they shall not hurt nor destroy my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. I know of a guy right now, he used to be our school teacher at the boys' home. And um, he went over to Zambi over to Africa there. And um, he's not far from Brother... Um, Brother... Um, Dobbins. Yeah, he's not far from him. I think he's like uh, 60 miles from him. 
And uh, they, they run into each other. I always told them about them, but I think just a couple months ago, I got a post from them saying, I finally run into Mike Dobbins. <laughs> anyway, uh, he said he does an orphanage over there, and he teaches school. And uh, over there on their property, one of the kids had old black mama hanging right in their closet, and just like that. Can you all imagine that? Hannah and Chris have their little girls over there. They've had mamas drop down and land right in front of their kids. Y'all imagine one bite from a mamba, you're done. You're done. And here they are dropping out of the trees right in front of your kids. Um, Sucking child shall play on the hole of an asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. Y'all ever walk through these woods thinking about snakes? I do. If you go to Tennessee, you think about snakes. They're, they're there. Um, over here in Grayson Lake, you jump in the lake and I'm, they've shut down swimming places because of the copperheads out there. You don't have to worry about that when the Lord comes. Yeah. Amen? That's millennium. You let your guard down about all that stuff. That would be a blessing. <laughs> um... Verse 10, And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse which shall stand for an ensign of the people, and it shall be Gentile seek, and, and it shall the Gentile seek, and his rest shall be glorious. So we'll have rest on the earth. The Lord's here. Not have to worry about anything. Nobody's stealing or anything. Illegals. Nobody hurting you. No war. Look at it now. I mean, what are we what are we looking? I mean, you come into church, you carry a gun just to be safe. You're afraid somebody come in. Uh, in that day there shall be a root of uh, Jesse, and which shall stand for ensign of the people, and it shall be it shall and and to it shall the Gentile seek, and and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover. The remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria, from Egypt, from Pathros, from Cush, from Elam, from Shinar, from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. Um, then they, I had the question, when's the first and the second restoration there? The first and the second one. I got looking and I couldn't hardly find it in notes. Then I was listening to Dr. Ruckman's tape and finally found it. <laughs> I was like, there it is. So I copied this off of him. Um, it gathered the nations. We went over Ezekiel 37. Now the Lord can do, the Lord's capable of doing anything. And, and, uh, and listen, the nation, when the tribulation hits, it's almost like it's wiped off the map. And the Lord brings it up. And God can do that with us too. I mean, just like, before we were saved, we were dead in trespasses of sin, and God made us alive in Christ Jesus. Lord does miracles, and God's able to save a remnant, and uh, He does, and He will, and He has. All right, let's um, uh, let's look at Ezekiel thirty-seven twelve. Ezekiel thirty-seven twelve. I want to read this real quick. Therefore prophecy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you. Ye shall live and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it saith the Lord. That's what's going to happen. They're going to look at that and then when they see the one whom they pierced, they're going to look at him and say, that is my God. And they're going to turn to him and he's going to rule over them. And they're going to be the center of the whole earth and God's going to rule and the nations are going to come in and, and out to Jerusalem because the Lord Jesus Christ is there and he's King of kings and Lord of Lord. You know, God is looking for his people to worship them. Now who's his people right now? I mean Israel is physically. Amen. Now let me ask you this. Are you God's child? 
Spiritually, I'm God's child. You know what he's looking for? He's still looking for somebody to worship him. And uh, like I said this morning, you coming in here just normal every Sunday. We come in here Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. We open a Bible. We come and uh, that gives God glory. And uh, I know sometimes things get old, you know, or am I stuck? Well, if you're stuck in a rut, just make sure you put your mind and heart into it and l worship the Lord. Make it personal. It changes then. Church changes. And, uh, and, and it's got to get real. It's got to get real. Okay, so uh, the Lord saves the remnant. Now, if you notice there in verse 11... In that day there shall be a root of Jesse. Verse 11, it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria, from Egypt, from Pathros, from Cush, from Elam, from Shinar, from Hamath, from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nation, shall assemble the outcast. See that word? The outcast of Israel. And gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Them three words, a remnant, the outcast, and the dispersed. They're going to come back. So the first, the first one, the first time they got scattered, outcast, dispersed, um, is Nebuchadnezzar. Look at Daniel 5.17. Daniel 5.17. And this is when they come in and they take the temple. They take Jerusalem. They surround it at Nebuchadnezzar. And they destroy Jerusalem and break down the temple and everything. And they ruin it. Uh, look at, um, and that's Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel 5, 17. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let thy gifts... You know what this, this is about? Now, if you look at the date, it's uh, B.C. 538. I mean, he, he had a dream and he said, Somebody's got to interpret it. And Daniel comes in and he says, You're going to be destroyed. And he says, Okay, you're going to be the... You're, who can, he says, You're going to be the king. And Daniel says, no, nah, I'm not going to be the king. Uh, you keep your gifts to yourself because you're fixing to die. And that's what he said. And uh, haste ye, haste ye to the spoils. We just went over me here, shall has baz. Well, I have heard thee that thou uh, canst make into... Uh, verse 16. Canst make interpretation, dissolve doubts. Now if thou canst read the writing... And the known to me the interpretation there, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet, have a chain of gold about thy neck, and shalt be the third ruler in the kingdom. You know what? Daniel wasn't worried about that. He wasn't worried. He says, you're fixing to get killed. And Daniel answered and said before the king, Let thy gifts be to thyself, give thy rewards to another, yet it will read the writing unto the king, and make known to him the interpretation. O thou king, the most high, God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom, and majesty, and glory, and honor. And for all the majesty that he gave him, all the people, nations, languages, trembled and feared before him, whom he would be, slew and whom he would he kept alive and whom he would he set up and whom he would he put down and when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride he was disposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him now that's what's happened and he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beast, and his dwelling was the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen. His body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew the Most High God ruleth in the kingdom of men, that he appointed over it whomsoever he will. And thou, his son, O Belteshazzar, hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this. But this thou hast left up thyself against the Lord of heaven. And they have brought the vessel of his house before thee, and thy lords, thy wives, 
wives, thy concubines have drunk wine in them, and thou hast praised gods of silver, of brass, iron, wood, stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know, and the God in whose hand thy breath is, in whose all thy ways hast thou not glorified. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and his writing was written, and this is the meaning, uh, meaning, meaning, tekel, you farsen, this is the interpretation, the thing. Meaning, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balance and art found one in Paris. Thy kingdom is divided, given to the Medes and the Persians. Then commanded Belteshazzar, and they clothed Dandel, Daniel with scarlet, with a chain of gold about his neck, and made proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. He said he didn't need that. And in that night was Belteshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain. And Darius, the Median, took the kingdom, being about three score and two years. Now that's, where, that's it right there. That's the first um, where they're scattered right there. The remnant, an outcast. And then he kills most of them, and uh, a lot of them taken prisoners right there. Um, the second time... On the dispersion is where they get back together is 1948. And they're coming back together. Now I'm going to tell you what, we're still watching that. We have seen that. We can look at history and that's in our time. And we see where Israel is starting and people coming back from all over the nations going back to Israel. And uh, that is... That is something you can see. And that's talking about it right there in Isaiah 11. And that was foretold hundreds of years before it happened. It's pretty wild. And only the Lord... And the, he said it twice. Right there, verse 11. Look at it. Um, 11, 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set His hand against the second time to recover... The remnant of his people. Now who knew about that? How did, how did they know about that? They didn't. They wrote it. The Lord prophesied it. And it happened. Muhammad can't do that. Any other book can't do that. Only the Bible can do that. Uh, only the Word of God. Alright. In 1948, um, well Nebuchadnezzar 598 he captured Jerusalem and they went into captivity right there. Um, and then they come back. They're restored. They come back with Ezra and Nehemiah in 483 B.C. before the first coming of Christ. That's the, and then you have the second restoration. In 70 A.D. under Titus, they were destroyed again. And you go from 70 A.D. to 19... 18 uh, until 19 until na you know the 1980 decree from uh, the king of Persia in 1918 you know what he made a decree that the Israel the the Jewish people would go back to Israel and you know what happened they didn't go they didn't go so God had to use Assyria Hitler and God used him as a tool to get them to come back. And when he got done with them, they're ready to come back. And I'll tell you what, um, you can go through history and look at that and just watch over it. In 1918, you look at that decree, and then you look at this, you go back in history and watch all that, and, um, and you look at the history of Israel and the Holocaust and the things that went on with them Jewish people, And then you look at Romans 11, you just better be thanking God you're saved. Amen? And uh, God is able to work them and make them do what He's wanting them to do. And you know what He's looking for? He's wor looking for them to, to worship Him and, and uh, serve Him. And Israel hasn't done that yet. They went home. In 1948, Israel became a nation. And you look at the wars... Uh, I think it's a six year war there there's no possible way they could win and they won and God let them be a nation 
Now they're all coming back. They're all coming back. All right, as, as uh, you have seen it in 1918 to 1948 and to now, uh, and right now, you look at Israel right now, that's the apple of God's eye. They're going through war, and we are right now, we're supporting them. We're, we're saying pray for the peace of Israel, and God help us if we drop that support. And, uh, and if you, when you come up on your elections, if the guy favors Israel, vote for him. If he don't, you better not vote for him. If he's against Israel, that's right Nicobod on us. And uh, that's, so you, that's the apple of God's eye. God's going to deal with them. Um, and they're going to come back. They're going to get together. The nation's going to go against them. They're going to cut them down. Then God's going to come back and destroy them at the Battle of Armageddon. So there's what's... Uh, happening right there. Now look at verse 12. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcast of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Um, he's going to do that. Look at Isaiah chapter 49. Isaiah 49. He'll gather them together. I know that we're repeating a lot of things, but it repeats. 49.22 Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles and set up my standard to the people, and they shall bring thy sons in their arms. Thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders, and kings shall be thy nursing fathers, their queens thy nursing mothers, and they shall bow down and see with their face toward the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. That's what God's looking for right there. And he'll gather them together. Okay, um, the envy of Ephraim shall depart, the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. They shall spoil them to the east together. They shall lay their hand upon Edom, and Moab and the children of Adam, Ammon shall obey them. The Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea with his mighty wind, and shall shake his hand over the river, and shall smite in the seven streams, and make men go over dry shod. And there shall be an highway for the remnant of the people which shall be left from Assyria like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. Um, now you need to understand this. God's gathering them. But Israel hasn't been converted yet. But they will. They will. when he. But he's got to work them that way. And... Um, I pray for the peace of Israel. And you know what the best thing for them to do is to turn to Jesus Christ. To turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, you know what you ought to be doing? Just tell every soul you can about the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, and you pray for Israel. Look at Isaiah 11, 12. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 12. It says, the ensign. That's the sign of the nations. Now... What did Hitler do to them Jews? He marked them. What did he mark them with? He put a gold star on them. And that marked them. And I'll tell you what, you had that mark, it was like, you, you're a sitting duck. But he put that gold star on them. You know what the sign of... You know what the... What, the Jews did when they crucified Jesus Christ. It said, His blood be upon us. You know what Jesus Christ, when He came into this world as a babe, you know what, a, what was a sign? It was a star. We'll go over some of them verses. Look at Genesis 49.10. On the gold star, Genesis 49.10. You can't make all... The Lord's wrote it. He laid it out in His Word. And uh, you, you can see it. If you study Israel and follow them, there's, I mean, it's as plain as day. This book is the Word of God. Genesis 49.10 
And the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be, binding his foal upon the vine, his ass cold unto the choice. He washed his garments in wine, and clothed in blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk. Now, this is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9, Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion, as an old lion who shall rouse him up. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. That's a prophecy of Jesus Christ. Okay, look at Numbers chapter 24. Numbers 24 verse 15. He's talking about the star. Pointing to Jesus Christ. Numbers 24 15. Everybody hearing me? Am I talking loud enough? Okay. Uh, 24, 15. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam the son of Beor hath said, The man whose eyes are open hath said. Now this is, a, this is strange right here because this is, this is a bad prophet. <laughs> but he's speaking the truth. And he hath said, that means the Lord's going to use him. And, Lord, and he said, which heard the words of God and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling in a trance, but having his eyes open. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob. A scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Seth. And Edom shall be possession and Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies, and Israel shall do violently. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion, and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. There it is. There, there's that gold star. Now look at um, Micah 5.2. Micah 5.2. I'm getting there. My, I got a new Bible. I'm trying to get used to it. Micah 5 2. The best way to get used to it is just start teaching out of it. <laughs> but thou, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth had been from the old, from everlasting. Therefore will I give them. Um, so there's, there's the pro prophecy right there talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Star out of Bethlehem right there. Look at Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. We're, that's right where we're teaching. Isaiah 9 2. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. And that's what it's talking about that prophecy, the light coming to Israel, the land the, the y'all we sing that oh beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on us, uh, Isaiah 7 14, look at there at the um, 7 14, and therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign, behold a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, now um, and he's made under a woman why? So he, he's made, God made him. He's born of a woman. There we go. Uh, born of God. Yeah. Born of God. And he used a woman. Look at um, Galatians 4, 4 and 5. Galatians chapter 4. See this. God used Mary. But she's just a, a normal person. But God... Use look, look at Galatians chapter four verse four. It's talking about Jesus. Here we go. Maybe I should have grabbed my old Bible.
All right, four. Galatians 4.